let me now get to the last thing I wanted to say, which is probably the most important thing I wanted to say, which <coughs> is, um, so I've been, I, I was a nominee for 11 months, and I know this isn't going to laugh at me because she was three years, but, um, and I came here every month, and I spent, as many of you know, I spent a couple days every month trying to meet as many people as I, as I could. Um, one of the things that struck me, and I think for those of you who are here, we take it for granted a little bit, is we have a lot of very, very good people and very committed people that work for this organization um, who are working really hard and doing really good work across a number of fields. And uh, it can't be that fun to work in a place where, you know, most people in the United States don't even know you exist. Um, you hear about bad morale, all sorts of stuff. We have work to do on all that, mm -hmm. obviously. But um, I think the core of what I came away was, God, we have some really great people. And particularly on the journalist side, where we have journalists who are um, – who are, in some cases, you know, risking their personal safety, risking their lives to, to go out and do good work. Um, this is, you know, this, that's really the tip of the spear. That's really where this, this organization and its mission meets the everyday realities of the world that we live in. So, um, you know, I don't know how much of the organization is watching, um, hopefully some of them, but uh, I, do, I do think as we start, I think one of the great assets of this place is the people that we have. We have great people. We're doing great work. And... Uh, and I wanted to say that in addition to the pure mission, one of the things that excites me about the coming challenges is that we have, uh, we have a great, great group of people here. And thank you, everybody who is here. And thank you, everybody who's listening or watching, if anybody is. And by the way, one of the goals should be getting more people watching these board meetings because they are tough to watch, I would say, from personal experience. <laughs> <laughs> so um, along that line, I, I'd like to continue the tradition of the past boards um, by reminding everybody the difficult and dangerous work that our journalists do. Journalists are at the heart of this agency's mission, as I just said, and they face risks every day in carrying out their duties. And let me talk about a couple of them in tradition of the past board meetings. I think it's a good tradition. So yesterday, August 20th, was the one-year anniversary since Al Hura TV correspondent Bashar Fahmy disappeared while reporting in Aleppo, Syria. Uh, Bashar remains missing, unfortunately, and incommunicado. Um, the BVG board has been profoundly concerned about Bashar since he went missing, and it's been a very long year of uncertainty and pain for Bashar's wife and children and his family and for his Al Hura family. I ask that anybody publicly with information about Bashar's whereabouts or well-being to please step forward and contact us or to contact NBN and, and Al Hura. Um, I repeat the board's call for immediate release of Bashar wherever he is, as well as other journalists being held in Syria, including Austin Tice and James Foley. Um, Khadija Ismailova, an investigative journalist with RFERL's Azerbaijan service, faces escalating threats in Azerbaijan following her reporting on government corruption. Khadija was, sub was subjected to online abuse in, abuse in March 2012 when footage obtained through hidden surveillance equipment planted in her apartment appeared on pro-government websites and in official media. A month later, she was also the subject of a fabricated obscene video posted online. The Azeri government responded to these incidents with a public promise to investigate, but to date, as far as we know, there, no such investigation has taken place. Late last month, unknown parties released a new video containing illegally obtained images of her. So the board joins RFERL and Reporters Without Borders and numerous international NGOs in calling for an investigation into the threats and harassment towards Khadija and for the perpetrators to be brought to justice. Echo Kavkaza, RFERL's Georgian service, which broadcasts to Abkhazia and South Ossetia, received a letter last week from the so-called official representative of the president of, of Abkhazia that labeled the broadcaster a propagandist information service, adding that authorities at some point will have to take certain measures. RFERL, which provides a balanced alternative to official media in these separatist regions, considers the letter a direct threat to its stringers on the ground. Also this month, during an outbreak of violent protests in Cairo, Elizabeth Errett, Middle East correspondent for the Voice of America, was pulled from a car and briefly detained by police. Her colleague, VOA freelance cameraman reporter Chafet Weeks, was also detained and roughed up. Both journalists were let go without charge. The board urges officials and local authorities to ensure the safety of all of our journalists operating in high-risk locations and to punish those that misuse authority, threaten, or harm, you know, harm journal reporters. Also. Um, it's not in the script, but I understand, Libby, from you that in Cambodia things are getting uh, more more tenuous there as well. So that's one thing I would add to the report here that we uh, 
we are with our, our reporters in Cambodia and hope that their safety will continue to be um, assured by the embassy there. And Thank lastly, you. I'm saddened to report that Simon Wade Kazmiro, a reporter working on VOA's South Sudan and Focus radio show, died in a road accident on August 5th. Colleagues noted that Simon was a hardworking and dedicated journalist and would go out of his way to, to get all elements of the story, no matter how long it took or how difficult or dangerous the assignment was. We grieve the loss of Simon, and we extend our condolences to his family and colleagues and the VOA family. So with that, let me meet, lead to kind of a couple more housekeeping items before we move to closed session uh, for a couple of our closed items. Um, and let me just make a, a note on that. Um, the, I'm a big believer in openness. I think that the way that organizations gain credibility with their with their employees and with, with everybody they work with is to do as many things out in the open as possible um, and make sure that people um, know they can contact us and they can find out about whatever's going on. That you know, For those, those of you I met around here, and I think Matt and Ryan, Susan and Michael and I should all share that belief. There are a couple things, however, as you can imagine, that have to be done by law in closed session. So, for example, today uh, we're going to be officially approving a new CFO. Anything contractual that has contractual items or personnel issues, unfortunately, by law, we have to do it private. So it's not that we want to go into a secret room and do things in secret. We're just required by law, and hopefully people will respect that. I, I was thrilled um, that the, the previous board adopted a policy on releasing information from closed sessions. So at least there's a record with, with some of the personal items redacted. But the goal, I think, of the board is to do as many things out in the open as we possibly can so people know the good work we're doing and know the decisions and big issues we're debating. 